John, how the heck does the 2024 Toyota Grand Highlander drive? Well, in this video, we started with the very base engine, the 2.4 liter turbo. We drove the 2.5 liter hybrid and then also the Mac Daddy Hybrid Max. Let's get into it. So guys, let's start this powertrain comparison with the base powertrain for the Grand Highlander. It is the 2.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine mated to an eight speed transmission. Now this XLE that I'm in, this one is all wheel drive. So it's a little bit more money because it'll just come standard as a front wheel drive variant but, but even still this car is 265 horsepower 310 foot pounds of torque with 21 miles per gallon in the city 27 miles per gallon on the highway with a combined total mpg of 23 miles per gallon that's really not that bad at all so we'll just get up and go real quick <laughs> 50 miles an hour so it moves this car pretty good. We will just continue down the road a little bit to get a little bit more driving characteristics of this. We're gonna drive after this, the 2.5 liter Toyota hybrid system. That one is also an all wheel drive. And the cool thing about that, that's an XLE. So XLE to XLE. And then at the end, we are going to drive the Mac Daddy, the hybrid max with all the horsepower and all the torque. So accelerating, so accelerating up a little grade now. Can hear the turbo a little bit. So we're cruising at 62 miles an hour right now. Little bit of wind noise in this one. Again, this is the XLE. We'll take a listen, 62 miles an hour. Not horrible at all. This car does have acoustic glass in the front window and also acoustic glass on the passenger window. So when cars pass us like this, take a listen to this car hardly hear it like really you you hardly hear other cars pass you and then the wind noise I mean again we are just a big SUV driving through the wind but first impressions of this 2.4 liter turbo it can definitely move this car this is Toyota's new style of motor that is replacing the V6s they put it in the current Highlander this Grand Highlander has it instead of a V6 the new Tacoma the base engine is this instead of a V6 so Obviously, those are heavy vehicles, and this engine, surprisingly, moves them pretty well. Right now, looking down at this screen too, I'm not sure how other journalists have been driving this vehicle, but it's saying that the total average is 25.8 miles per gallon, and I'm not sure, one, when the last time that that was reset, or also how hard other people have been hammering on it, but you've seen me, I just keep flooring it. <laughs> A little he hesitation right there from it. So let's say you pull into your neighborhood or a beautiful resort like this in Hawaii. Holy smokes, man, just look at this terrain. It's just so beautiful here, but it's pretty quiet. And this is the XLE. This is the lowest model on the totem pole that Toyota is offering on this vehicle. And it is, I, I, would, be, I would be perfectly fine with the XLE. It has a lot of good features. And it drives pretty well too, it drives very well. So the base engine, the 2.4 drives great. Let's go ahead now and see how efficient yet powerful the normal 2.5 hybrid is. All right, so driving impressions now of the Grand Highlander XLE hybrid with the 2.5 liter hybrid system. This one is an all wheel drive. We have 310 foot pounds of torque, 243 horsepower, 36 miles per gallon on the highway, 32 city, 34 combined. And this one coming in, at $44,000 starting price. So pretty freaking good. So when I was driving this to the Harbor real quick, I wanted to drive it first, like I am with all the other vehicles. But as I was driving it here to the Harbor to make some content with it, I was talking to my wife on the phone. And I like to do that at these events just because that's what I would typically do at my house, right? Like if I need to call her on the phone, kind of giving you that vibe of your old and kind of just giving you that vibe of your typical environment. But I just forgot that I was driving a new car, basically is what I'm getting at. Like it felt really comfortable and I'm talking to her just as if I was in one of my own vehicles. So this is a prototype. It's a little bit rough of roads here and try to go like over these bumps. It sounds decent, man. I mean, so the smaller wheels on this one definitely help cushion it up a little bit more, but the XLE for this Grand Highlander, it's at the bottom of the totem pole, but still at 44,000 bucks, 
Uh, that's that's a pretty good deal uh, for this one, especially with the hybrid powertrain too. I did reset the trip. We're only going like 10 miles, so that's gonna be really hard to gauge a proper miles per gallon. But if we have 36 miles per gallon on the highway, all these seats with this car, it really gets up and goes. And I mean, it just feels like a super comfortable car to road trip in, man. So like I was saying, I was on the phone with her, just BSing, driving. I felt just super comfortable. I'm a, I'm a Toyota person. So everything is just laid out like a Toyota should be. The steering wheel feels good on this one. It doesn't feel super cheap for being an XLE. The acoustic glass that you get on the XLE is nice. They're very quiet of a car, very quiet. I mean, take a listen. And that's with no external microphones. It's literally straight from the iPhone. I, I, I didn't do any external mics to like augment stuff and that was going over a bump. So very good with this, just cruising at 40 miles an hour. We'll just put the pedal down just real quick. CVT trans and that's 60. So very properly quick for how heavy and how big this car is again you just can't beat the gas mileage in this class of bigger crossover vehicles and the xle it's going to be a good budget car for a lot of people the driving position seems nice uh the seat i kind of wish went a little bit lower and not for me seat feels fine but my wife she's five foot one and I have a feeling that when she drives this car, if I get one as a press vehicle, she may kind of say that she wishes the seat sat a little bit lower down. I'm not sure. You can lower the front of the seat down because this one is a 10-way adjustable seat. So you can pivot the seat down, but I feel like I would want the seat if I was a shorter person to sit maybe a, just a little bit further down, but me at five foot 11, it's not that big of a deal at all. It actually, It's actually pretty comfortable. But the vehicle handles pretty well, turns really well for this all wheel drive. I don't think that we have any just front wheel drive vehicles here at this uh, event, but gets up to speed good. We're already cruising at 50. Um, take off the gas as we're just going down the hill. It's a solid road tripper, solid, solid road trippers. Driving impressions, I mean, it's just nothing to wow you, right? <laughs> it's, it's a family hauler, that's all it is. And I would feel super comfortable hauling family, hauling dogs, whatever, on a road trip with this lower grade one. All right, so we are now in a Platinum with the Hybrid Max, this one in a beautiful coastal cream color, new for the Grand Highlander. But this one for the Hybrid Max, we have 362 horsepower, 400 foot-pounds of torque, 26 miles per gallon city, 27 highway, 27 combined, not that bad. So this one utilizes a 2.4 liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine, and then in the back, we have a electronic motor as well. So that means this car obviously is all wheel drive. This one is the Platinum. So we have a bit more of softer materials on the inside, but honestly, not much. And just driving up here, I like to kind of get an idea of the car first before I just like, oh, here's how it drives. So this one is just as quiet as the XLE, maybe just a tad bit more quiet because it does still have the acoustic glass like the XLE does, but however, it rips <laughs> this thing this thing is pretty fast um it is saying 15.1 miles per gallon because i feel like people have been just ripping the car and just seeing what all that torque is about in this thing um but it is still very nice and very refined drive up here actually has some pretty nice scenery which i will show you guys but i mean just the torque response is just it's just there <laughs> now there is fake pumped in noise. It's a four cylinder engine. I personally, I personally don't like that because it sounds kind of V80, like like kind of like a V8. I don't know about this guys. I mean, it's, it's cool, but I know for a fact, 100%, it is augmented sound. It is augmented sound. Now this car does have active noise cancellation. Um, so they kind of fed that into this car too, to go hand in hand with the fake noise but i mean we'll just put the pedal down real quick so i mean it, it sounds good i mean kind of v8 like a little bit of a growl but also at the same time kind of reminiscent to a v6 i don't know i i think that if i'm getting this platinum vehicle i would want it to just 
be kind of quiet. I would just want it to be quiet and refined. I mean, that may be what the Lexus model is going to be is quiet and refined, but I don't know. Like driving right now, I don't hear it, right? But if I put the pedal down after this nice winding turn, which actually the Grand Highlander handles really well for being so big, like you do not feel like this is a big car. We're gonna kinda get back behind these guys a little bit. All right, gonna put the pedal down real quick. It's very, very well. But what it is, right, Like, and just like I said with the XLE, I don't care if it is just, you know, a, it's not supposed to be a driver's car. It's supposed to be a family car. It's, it's and, and cool, you have power, you can tow 5,000 pounds with this thing, awesome. Like if you don't need the Sequoia and you still kind of want the torque, that is what this one is for. Um, but bumpy roads, turning good with the um, all wheel drive with it. I mean, it, it just feels well planted. So now just going down this road, I'm at about 60 miles an hour. We'll take a listen to the wind noise. A little bit of wind noise there is a storm rolling in uh there is a storm rolling in i've been using the windshield wipers to clean uh the windshields because it is raining a little bit but not a whole lot of wind noise i would like to get this car up to like 75 80 i don't know if there's anywhere <laughs> on this island in hawaii uh, that will allow vehicles to get up to 70 or 80 legally this car has 20 inch wheels so the tires are a little bit thinner of profile they're still not super super thin but it is pretty pretty quiet and pretty good. I definitely recommend the Hybrid Max. I mean, with the physical six-speed transmission, it's not a CVT like the other hybrid with their 2.5, but that 2.5 is still good. If you want efficiency, I mean, shoot, that thing gets almost 10 miles per gallon more than this one on the highway, right? It gets 36 miles per gallon on the highway for that one, and that's pretty good for such a big car. This one though, I mean, with this 2.4 in it, with the hybrid in the back, the torque is just, it just gobs up torque and it'll just drive really well. So with the all wheel drive, if you're up in the mountains with the turbocharger, I mean, and it, it just depends on what you're gonna use your Grand Highlander for, but I'm very excited that I got to drive this Hybrid Max. It drives great, no issues with it at all. So yeah, back to the garage. So which one would I pick after driving all three of them? Well, weirdly, I would go with the 2.5 liter hybrid for some reason. The CVT and the Toyota just proven hybrid system is just really, really good. Now, don't get me wrong, the Hybrid Max, that flew. That was a very nice vehicle, very torquey, but at the end of the day, if you're just looking for a very functional vehicle, I think that one with very good miles per gallon, like that 2.5 liter hybrid gives you, I think that is honestly the way to go. The normal entry level engine for the 2.4, I think it's great. It's a good engine to get that vehicle going, but honestly, I feel like that engine may get phased out kind of quick in in replacement for just the hybrid variant and also the hybrid max and then if Toyota ever brings like a plug-in hybrid to this lineup of the Grand Highlander. So my I, I would definitely go with the 2.5 liter. I think it has plenty of power to move the vehicle. Very good gas mileage with it as well. My second choice would be the hybrid max just because it's just so powerful and it actually gets pretty decent gas mileage. And then my last choice would probably be the entry level engine, the 2.4 liter turbo. So what do you guys think? Let me know down in the comment section below and I will catch you all in the next one. All right, see you later.